okay you're live on the paul pluter channel this is with clive hello clive how are you great how about yourself honest hey remember like subscribe and tell your friends about my channel and uh remember guys man cannot live on google ads alone you're going to have to tick kick kick some money in i do paid reviews i do paid reviews with clive i do i just spent two and a half hours yesterday talking to a guy from thailand very very nice young man and clive do you want me to tell you what he had an std no Six buffalo? no he had a 50 50 p paddock yeah which probably doesn't mean a damn thing to you like it didn't mean anything to me but it's actually a per Petual calendar retrograde. Okay, in platinum. And uh, he's actually quite a lovely guy, quite a lovely guy. I was having a nice chat to him, just giving him advice on building his collection. His um, really, really cool guy. Really, really cool guy. Uh, now, Clive, I'm available. Phone calls, 50 US dollars an hour, 50 US an hour. You can tip a bit more. It ha always helps lubricate. Man cannot live on Google Ads alone. Now, Clive, today we're talking Grand Seikos. Actually, there's there's a couple of there's one actually thing I'd like to point out. Yes, sir. I've got, I've got a couple of my very own trolls on the board. And yes. They're saying I will. So theoretically, yes. if someone wanted to butt me off the live streams, yes. all they'd have to do is pay you to be on the live streams instead, wouldn't they? That's exactly right. It, it can all be done. Everything is, I'm a complete prostitute. And uh, that's why we don't mention the mustache wearer because I was paid $500 to remove him from my channel. He was nice. never, never, that's it. Well, it's, it's c c purely a business transaction. It's nothing personal. It's just business. Now, Clive, let's talk Which Grand Seiko's. Grand Go Seikos. Now, I've got to tell you honestly, right, it's very tricky. One thing I will say to you, which Clive did say to me, is it is very, very tricky to find, you know, much about these Grand Seikos. Like, the Japanese haven't really marketed the brand fantastically. Now, what I'm going to do is, Clive, we're going to jump straight in to the Seiko, Grand Seiko website. So have a look at this, right? They don't really, they call it, like, 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 new. I gotta be new, at, new limited, new limited, new, awesome. You know what I mean? Like this does it. It's got an SBG, SBGD two zero two, SBGH two five five. I mean, this is you know they don't call it an explorer. They, they just very very. I, I'm not trying to have a go at them because they're doing a great job, but. Man, this is hard to fall in love with it when it's so clinical. They're a bit clinical. You know, <clears throat> even the snowflake, it's not really publicized as the snowflake. It's a, you got to, it, it, it's a nickname, yes. And uh, I've got to be honest with you, this just makes it tricky because. Okay, you, well, stop, 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 stop. Well, okay. Just stop at any, okay, let's see. Stop it. Okay, let's see. Do I want an SBGD202 or an SBGH255? Hmm. You see what I mean? It's not romantic. Yeah. Like they don't have a explorer or, you know, it's just it's just not it's very hard to pick on which one you want to well, go to. And well, uh maybe, maybe you could uh, maybe you could go back and you're saying you're wanting a diver. You're wanting a uh, grand a grand Seiko. No, today's today's topic is Clive. We're gonna we're gonna we're trying to discuss whether we go high beat or we go snowflake. Okay. Okay. So the see if I'm looking here for this this model, right? I can't even find I can't even find easily. I can't even find it easily. Do you understand? I'm on the, the Seiko the, the Grand Seiko site. And it's not easy to find this damn thing. You know what I'm saying? It's very hard. Maybe you could offer your service. Maybe you could offer your services to Seiko as a brand ambassador or marketing director. 
Yeah, I am somehow don't know if they really want me, Clive. Oh, come on. I mean, you're, you're, I, think, I think you're one of the people that single-handedly pulled the Explorer 2 back into the public consciousness. Yeah, ha Clive, I, I wish it was the case. But look, let me tell you this now, right? Let's look at this. The high beat model. The only way we can search by the high beat, we look at the movement. The high <laughs> beat model. Look at this. You've got to know this. It's an RS85. RS85. That is the high beat model. Okay? It, it didn't even look like an S. It looks like a 9585. I know. I know. Look at this. This is, but you, this is how tricky it is look at this this so this this is one here this is what they look like see it's it's a complete and beautifully formed mechanical high beat thirty six thousand beats per hour that's fine um okay so that gives you that okay so so but do you understand how tricky it is to find the right model now if we wanted say we wanted the snowflake the snowflake uses the um spring drive the spring drive with the <clears throat> a quartz crystal case material uh, here's how you speed up case material click on that no no, no. well actually well if we fight the, the movement is a it's a 9r65 9r65 that's the the snowflake here we go this is this is that's the snowflake you understand right it's not even called a snow i mean this is this is this is the big problem is that it's so hard to find the model you want unless you're a pure this 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 is why this brand is a purist you thought the iwc was for wacky purists seiko is even worse now let's discuss it what would you go for let's compare these two so firstly we have the snowflake okay actually let's let's discuss these two watches okay the snowflake first right what do you think of this snowflake tell me honestly clive it's nice. I mean, I could. I, um, I like the blue second hand. I, I think they should have put the data blue as well. Um, I'm not wild about the. I, I've always thought that the power reserve for a uh, complication was a bit gimmicky and just takes up valuable dial space and clutters it mm -hmm. up a little bit. Okay. But otherwise, yeah. It's it, otherwise, it's just your classic clean, simple dial. What about the snowflake? It's it, that this is where it gets its name yeah. from. Is that six-layered dial to get that that textured finish? I think it's amazing. Well, it is nice, and it, but however, that's even hard. I mean, besides the fact that they don't refer to it as such, um, you know, we're looking at their own website. I'm looking on an i uh, MacBook Pro Retina display, and I'm even having problems recognizing the intricacies of the snowflake. I mean, of the dial itself. Now, let's have a look at this here. We're just going to look at a few things. So it's made out of Seiko, Grand Seiko's proprietary steel, high-definition dual-curve sapphire crystal, anti-reflection coating. It's 41 mil watch. Thickness is 12.5 mils. Uh, the movement, let's talk about this movement. This movement itself, spring drive, 72 hour power reserve. Look at the accuracy. Plus or minus one second per day. Huh. What do you think of that? Well, nice, certainly nice. That's absolutely amazing. Look, 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 look at the finish. This is the movement. Look at that. Look at that realistically. So this watch itself here, you know how it gets its accuracy. It's from the quartz. And it's got a, it uses a it uses it uses a um electromagnet in it a quartz it uses a quartz it, this is to do with the the re regulating the piece this is how it does it so it's mechanical movement with with quartz components inside of it slight quartz component inside it to regulate it so yes it's still a mechanical watch does that make sense yeah the only problem is you know one thing i've always said for for wrist watches is an automatic you know if you have a nuclear flash oh uh, 
if you had a nuclear explosion, like say North Korea, right? Let's just talk hypothetically. Are you talking about electromagnetic pulse destroying all uh, yes electric electronic yes. components? Yes. Uh, yes. 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 Yes, I am. How did you know that? Because you, it, it was pretty obvious you were telegraphing it, and that would be that would be an obvious advantage to all the older all mechanical movements. So, now, what would happen to this one then? It would stop its regulation, but would it still keep going? Well, maybe we could get a fun drive together, and we could. Uh, no, I. We could have you test it, but you know, I'm just wondering where you'd get the uranium from. I could go. To, I, I'd probably go go to uh, Japan actually, because they they seem to be flying a lot of missiles <laughs> over the the top at them at the moment. No, actually, we can do a fundraising trip. You to a mm -hmm. buy you a, a Grand Seiko, uh, a Grand Seiko uh, snowflake, and B plane tickets to Fush Fukushima. But no, it it only loses. The quartz would only go from an explosion. Once it's exploded, th there would be high levels of radiation, but it wouldn't stop the quartz crystal from working. It needs that flash of an atomic blast. Yeah, but severe radiation can also have the same effect. That's why they keep sending the ra the robots into the reactors of Fukushima, and they get like three steps and like die. Oh, the robots die. Yeah. I see. And okay. Japanese robots. And and then, and they're Japanese robots, and you know they work a hell of a lot harder than the ones the we make over here. Yes. Yeah. Now, okay, so so let's let's that's that's the this is the snowflake, right? What do you think of that? I think it's an amazing watch, right? Right. Um, so, it says here so the spring drive. To, sorry. Go ahead. Its sole power source is its main spring. Okay, so this this let's let's have a talk about this. This is the nine R spring drive special spring drive. Uh, it, it, it regulates a, a spring-driven movement with state-of-the-art electronic technology that functions without batteries or other external power source. Its sole power source is the main spring, which drives a series of gears. A rotor connected to the end of these gears generates a small electric charge that activates an electronic circuit and quartz oscillator. Its accuracy is unprecedented for a watch wound by a main spring. The development of the 9R spring drive movement was possible only because Grand Seiko is one of the few manufacturers with expertise in both mechanical and electronic watches. Now, let's go and have a look at a high beat. Can we just compare this to a high beat? Because I want to know whether, I want to know what you would choose because, Clive, this is a very important thing. So it's the, not, this is how tricky it is to find it. 9S85. Right. Okay, these are high beat ones. Okay, so let's compare a white dial one. Look at this. This is a high beat. Uh, it, you can see it doesn't have the snowflake dial. It doesn't have the power reserve either. So that's right. that's a plus for you. Um, it's also, this watch here is in steel. Okay, so this is a steel watch. Let's just have a look at the, the classification. It's got a, a dual curve sapphire crystal, anti uh, reflection, 40 mil, okay, 13 mil <laughs> thickness, so a little bit thicker. Um, a little moon, bit smaller. Yeah, little, wee bit, wee bit. Um, now, this here is uh, the accuracy is plus five to three seconds per day. That's pretty amazing for a, um, it says when the watch is actually wound, the accuracy should be one second, one minus one seconds a day. To plus 10 seconds a day. Yeah, I was doing a little bit of reading about that. Apparently they hold <laughs> themselves to higher standards than the Swiss. Yeah, now you, you know how that works, the 36,000 beats per hour, don't you? That That's how... Traditional Rolex watches would be 28, 8, aren't they? Right. But this is a high beat because it's it's running faster, hence the name. 
a lot of paddocks. The paddock I've got is a 21,600 beats per hour. Did you know that? Maybe you could trade it in on a uh, Grand a Seiko. Bit. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, pay look, little, you'd have to pay a little extra, but, you know, hey, put on the card. Now, let's – got to tell you, there aren't a lot of these watches available. Okay, so let's – Let's go and try another tactic, okay? I'm going to try another tactic with you. I'm going to jump on to – let's jump on to Chrono, okay? Actually, just type – put the uh, reference number itself for the high beat yep. in Google. Here we go. Okay, here we go here. This is – I've just done it. I've just placed that reference number. SBGH201. Here we go. Right. Four, two. Four, three, 50. Grovberg have got one. And there's also another one uh, just under four. Okay. Okay. So there we're about 4,000 US dollars. Now let's go back there. Where was that? Let's find the snowflake. We want to find the SBGH 201, I think. Was that it? <clears throat> SBGH. Ooh. Let's let me find it. This is how tricky it is to find it. You understand what I'm saying? I'm I'm having trouble. Someone actually, someone in the notes actually. SBGA two one one. That's what it is. SBGA two one one. Let's see if I can find that on on uh, Chrono. Let's have a look. So SBGA two one one, and it's actually, gee, they've got one here for four thousand, four three. <clears throat> There's one for eight. One for five. Let's look at this one for four. So it's 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 within the same price, Cooey. Um, <clears throat> what do you think, Clive? Four, four's, four US is a lot of money. Gee, it looks look. It, it's it's got a box papers everything. Um, that's that's a fair bit of money, but isn't it? That's not it's not super cheap. But how well are the case specs? How are the move? How well are the movements decorated? I think they're both in case specs, and I think there's a little bit of difference in the. Uh... I I would say honestly, I think realistically, could I live with titanium? That's going to be the biggest bug bearer. And semi quartz. So basically, it, it, it's a quartz. It doesn't require a battery. The movement itself provides the yes. power for the. But if there was a nuclear explosion, it possibly wouldn't work. And with 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 uh, North Korea being so close to Australia, I'm a little bit worried about whether I could take that risk. Mind you, I've got a couple of other watches too. And if you were that close to the explosion, the flashpoint, maybe the last thing you've got to worry about is whether the, the quartz crystal in your watch is buggered. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> maybe... actually, EMP can, can damage electronics from a long way away. It can? Um, yeah, that's it. actually... Uh, Limited war, nuclear war scenario is basically detonating a small small nuclear warhead high above cities. That way the electronics are taken out and thus the com command and control structure. But the populace and uh, their belongings are left intact. I see. And let's face it, who has a car with a carburetor these days? Any car with fuel injection would be gone, wouldn't it? Pretty much. Electronic fuel injection. I'm not talking the 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 semi mechanical fuel injection that's in some old Mercedes. Um, Clive, I wanted to say to you, which one would you choose, High Beat or Snowflake? They're similar money. What would you choose? Tell me what you'd choose. Flip flip a coin. Which one would you go for? You've seen the two. Which would you go for? You make a decision. I'd probably, I'd probably go. For, I'd probably go for the Snowflake just because of the dial. But it's it's on the other hand, it's hard because without seeing them in the flesh or in the metal, it's really hard to make a decision. Ooh, I would you actually I was gonna say to you, Clive, I would go high beat. You know why? Because you beat at a higher rate? I think <clears throat> the, the high beat goes back to the sixties. It's got a right. really good track record. Even though I understand it is a mechanical watch, the snowflake. I don't think I could live with the quartz thing. I'd be worried about that nuclear explosion with Kim Jong Un. And or neutron. Matt Church pointed out correctly, and that's yeah. what I'm struggling with: neutron bomb. 
And you so can, yeah, yes. Obviously, you'd want the uh, high beat to do the neutron dance. Yes, is, is is you understand what I'm talking about, don't you? Yes. So um, I got to be honest with you. Um, the question is, Clive, would do you support me on my Wait. quest? Yes. And I'd like I'd like everyone to note here. Archie never reads the comments. Archie never reads them. He's reading the comments right now. It's on the screen for all to see. Yes, yes, yes. I am actually reading the comments there. Um, you know, when I said this sucks, this is just kidding, right? I'm just playing it up for the fans. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, look, look, there's some nasty criticisms there. I think the Japanese, they haven't marketed these brands terribly. This, 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 they haven't marketed the snowflake terribly well they haven't they haven't it's bloody hard to find anything on their website do you understand it's bloody hard to find which one they're talking about and if i'm having that trouble could you imagine what a a prospective customer you got to make it easy buffy buffy and barbie buffy 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 doesn't ha you know buffy wants it made easy it's like going into a mercedes dealer it's easy to pick the one they want but seiko makes it so hard they make it so hard and i gotta be honest with you clive i really want i really want an easier easier way of doing things you know i want an easier way of doing things clive what would i pick I would go high beat. I'm sorry. I just can't stand the fact that it's got a quartz in it. I don't like quartz. What would you do, Clive? Well, well and here's the funny part. I think they did. That is almost catching up to the Swiss. You I want. Okay, I will buy a snowflake, but I want to know from Mr. Ugasaki. I'm going to ask Mr. Ugasaki if there is a Newton bomb that went off. Does it need to be regulated, and what's the downside? That's what I want to know. Absolutely. Because what, what happens if, if that failed? Would it still run without being regulated? Does it does it need to be regulated? Would it stop or would it just continue working? And I don't mind if it loses a bit more accuracy, but I just want to know that um, it would still carry on working. Absolutely. And by the way, someone brought up on the on the uh, boards, uh, Brucey Bruce. The discussion be the best Seiko under a thousand dollars. Dude, wrong channel. Sorry. There is well, Grand Seiko is is a um, you know the Grand Seiko reminds me. I was like a Toyota Crown. You know they still make those in Japan. Never heard of it. Oh, they were just legendary cars in the six seventies. You never heard of? Okay, fair enough. You you um. They may have been they may have been called something else over here. Yeah. Um. Clive, I got to tell you honestly, which would you go for? You've already said you would go for the snowflake. Right. Are you on the hunt for a snowflake? No, not really. Um, I'll uh, I'll see if Uberoki might have one in the vault. Okay. Okay. Then I would buy him for one from him for a very reasonable price, just to vex you. I mean, what good is having money if you can't enjoy it? <laughs> that's that's a that's a very nice thing, Clive. Um, I so, I am um... maybe maybe there's some, some mm. people on the boards that know about it. If someone wanted to send you mail you a uh, Grand Seiko for an extended oh. week on the wrist review. Yes, I would. I would send it back. I would love it. I would love to have a Grand Seiko on the wrist. I think they are amazing pieces, Clive. They are literally. Um, I, I I want one, Clive. I want one. Okay. Okay. Best I really turn out those reviews, big boy. Yeah. Yeah. Big I think you're right. Awesome. There. I um actually. Clive, I've, I've decided I'm not going to buy one until next year because I've, I've bought two watches this year, Clive. Right. I got the what? Inji and the Breguet this year. So every year I'm just slowly adding, not going to go crazy, just add a little bit each year. Nice. 
Clive, uh, it's been great uh, chatting what, to you. What watch are you wearing now? Isn't it customary to do a wristwatch check? Inji, Inji, Inji. Okay, nice. Inji, Inji, Inji. Clive, that was fantastic. You want to do another live show, or you had enough for tonight? Yeah, it's night's still young. I think I've, I've actually got a couple hours. Why not? Okay. Oh, by the way, you remember the wristwatch poison? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Put it on just for you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Clive. <laughs> That's like, you know, if I stay at your house, you're going to let me sleep on that rubber mattress, that putrid mattress. No, it's a king-sized, but no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> if, if, you know, the, 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 yeah, if I let you stay at the house, the if is the big one. Yes, 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 oh, yes. Perfect. Okay, Clive, I will, um, let's do another live show. I've got a really interesting one for you now coming up. Awesome. Look forward to it.